All right, rejoice, everybody. You're not rejoicing yet? Very good for you. It's very healthy to rejoice. Uh, if you try both options, if you tried being angry and mad and then try being rejoiceful, I guarantee you that one is better than the other. So, and rejoice is already, especially for believers, is a command. It's, uh, it's our right. And so what that means is that it's a decision that we have to make, like in everything else. Amen? So... Uh, I'm going to start out with um, Scripture right away. So let's go to John 17, verse 17. And Jesus is speaking to the Father. And Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Amen? And so... Uh, we're continuing our divine health plan training. And so because people struggle, the health part is the part that people can see. Obviously, you know, there's bigger issues with the soul and everything else. But uh, so every year we start out with uh, training on healing for your body, health for your body, divine health. Uh, because according to God's word... Jesus paid the price for our spirit, soul, and body. And so it is God's will is that everybody is super healthy. It's not just for some random people that take care of themselves. It's for every single believer. So Jesus paid the price. And so God created our bodies perfect. So repeat after me. God created my body perfect. Okay, that's a really, really important uh, point to understand because if you see that there is something wrong with your body and you speak that, then that's exactly what's going to be happening with your body. And so because God's word is truth, and if we agree with it, then whatever is in his word will be manifesting in our life. But... For some reason, it's easier said than done. For some reason, people have a very, very hard time believing what God's Word says. So ministering in the healing rooms for many years, we will tell people like what God's will for their body is, and we'll t I'll talk about it for 20 minutes, and then as soon as I'm done talking about it, the person keeps saying the opposite of what we just talked about, what God's Word says. And so... The enemy is trying to do everything he can to bring half-truths and bring people information that is really close to truth, but not the complete truth. So, and praise God that we have the Word of God, and in the Word of God, Jesus makes a statement, and the statement, I'm going to read it again, your word is truth. So the only thing that's out there that's a guaranteed 100% truth is this word. There is nothing else. So if it does not originate from here, if the source of the information that you're hearing does not originate from here, it eventually will, it might start out with truth, but it will lead and, and end up in a lie if it does not originate from here. Because there's two sources we know that there is God, and if God's word is truth, then the opposite of God is the devil, and what does he have? Lies. He's the opposite. But what he tries to pretend, that the enemy tries to pretend that he's also light, he tries to pretend that he's also truth, he tries to pretend that he's good, but he's not. It's interesting, um, I was uh, recently going through Genesis again, and one of the first things that God did is he separated darkness from light. It's almost like before he even started creating stuff, he created that separation. So he separated darkness from light. I'm not going to go through the scripture right now, but studying God's character, he does not play in the middle. 
what majority of the church believes. The enemy was able to sell a lie to the church and to many believers is that God is somehow working with the enemy, that he allows the devil to do stuff, that he uh, sends him, that's his uh, uh, dirty guy to do his dirty work for him. I mean, I heard all kinds of stuff growing up, you know, in, in church. But the truth is that the only thing that's true is God's word. So God and in his being is truth. Like, that, that's who he is. That's what he is. There is nothing else. So there is no lies in him. There is no darkness in him. And so for me, throughout ever since I got a hold of this message, what I'm working on is every day my goal is to see God better than I did when I woke up. To see God's word more than I did when I woke up. And that's my goal, just small, continuous changes in the way I see God is just to continue to see him better and better and better. And the way to do that is being in the Word. So when you read God's Word, I remember before I started believing the truth, when I was in here, my perception of God was really bad. And so everything that I would look in the Word, I couldn't believe it. But then when I decided that God is good, and I started looking through God's word as from a good father, then all of a sudden I started getting revelation of the truth of, of who he really is. And so the truth is, when it comes to healing, is that God created our bodies perfect, and his will for us to have divine health. Repeat after me. God's will, God's will. for my body to be in continuous health, supernatural health. Like that should be the end result, the goal, or whatever you want to call it, because everybody's in a different place. Like everybody has a different body. Everybody has different issues. Some people have more issues. Some people have less. Some people have different chronic things, non-chronic things, you know, attacks, whatever it is. But we have to decide a visual for ourself, because faith is seeing something that's not seen. So that means you have to decide and put something in front of you that you can't see physically yet. Otherwise, for me to say that this ceiling is white, I don't need faith, right? So if I look up, yeah, that ceiling is white. There is no faith. That's a, that's a fact. I can look at it and see it so there is no faith required. So what that means is obviously when if you're looking at your body and there's issues in it or something's going on that it's not supposed to or there's attacks of the enemy or whatever the issues with your body, you cannot see your body like that the way it is and think that something's going to change or that there's going to be a change in your body. That, that will not happen. So in order for your body to change, you have to start seeing your body from God's view, from God's perspective. And so from God's perspective is he created you with a perfect body. And his goal and his will is for you to walk in perfect health. And so for me, that's what I visualize. I visualize that every time that I look at, in the mirror at myself, I see myself getting younger, getting healthier. You know, everything's getting better. Like my expectation that my body is going to continue to get better every day. When I go to sleep, I expect when I'm going to get up in the morning, I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to be younger. I'm going to be stronger. That's my expectation. Why? Because that's what I see God saying. If God said that I'm created in his image which he said that for everybody who chooses to believe, that means that God's body is very, very good. Which means as his son, my expectation is that my body is supposed to be really good. So if I see my body perfect, how God sees it, what that means is I'm not allowed to say bad things about my body. 
Because if my body, if the end result of my body is a perfect body, I cannot say like, oh man, my, uh, my toes, they're just so ugly. Like I can't believe that I have such ugly toes or you know, whatever body part that I hear, you know, like so many people say negative things about their body parts. We're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to speak anything negative or anything contradicting because if the truth is that your body is perfect, that means that every body part that you have is perfect. That means if you say anything negative against any one of your body parts, what that means is that you're speaking lies. Why are you speaking lies? Because according to God's word, Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So if God said that he created man in his image, that means God created perfect bodies. And what that means is that anything negative said against a body so what that also means is that we are not allowed to look at, you know, especially as teenagers, we're not allowed to look at another, our friend, and say, when we get mad at them, and say, you're just so ugly. We can't, we're not allowed to do that. Why? Because we're speaking lies. Because the truth is that every single person was created in God's image, and every single person is beautiful. So we need to see everybody around us as beautiful and speak that way even though maybe in in our perception or in reality they might not look like that but if we're going to be in faith we need to see every person and every person's body after father god and what he said because his word is truth amen and that's really really important and so because Life and death is where? In the power of our tongue. So what we say either brings life or death because we're either speaking truth or lies. There is no middle ground. There is nothing in the middle. There is not, you can't just say something randomly and don't expect you know, it to happen. So something's happening. Every time we say things, we are either destroying things or creating things. Because with our mouth, because if we're created in God's image, created to be like God, God created things with his word, and then he created us with his hands. He formed us with his hands. So he put in a lot of work and he put in a lot of effort into our bodies. And so we have to start learning how to change how we see ourselves, how we see our body, and how what we say about our body, how we see other people around us, and what we say about people around us. So what we have to do is we have to remove all assumption. Like assumption is of the enemy. Like all assumption has to be removed. So before, I used to wonder, does God want me to be healthy or does God want me to be sick? Does, is God allowing this sickness to be here? Like, why is this thing attacking me? And so like, I used to, I used to have all of these negative assumptions about my father. And so what I'm noticing is that the more that I get to know who my father is, according to the word, because he's the truth, I'm noticing that assumptions are leaving me. Like, I don't like, I don't sit there and wonder if God wants me to be healthy. Like that went away. So all of that torment that I used to have is gone. So what that means is that if I'm experiencing any kind of pain or anything that I'm not supposed to experience, I have no more assumptions. I know without a doubt for that what's a fact is that whatever that is, is illegal and it has to go. So the only thing that I think about my father is that he wants my body to be very healthy. He wants my body to be quickened and renewed. So think about that. He put his spirit inside of us. The Holy Spirit abides inside of us. It's in our body. In Romans 8.11 it says, and I'm paraphrasing right now, is that that spirit is there to quicken 
our mortal bodies. And so what we need to learn is how to release that spirit and allow it to go to different parts of our body and renew it, fix it, quicken it. So anytime that something is wrong with our body, it's outside of God's will. It is illegal. It's the work of the enemy and it's illegal. And so either we have to remove it by ourselves or fix it by ourselves, or if we haven't learned how to do that yet, then get help, get somebody else to minister to you, get somebody you know, to help you till you figure it out. But the end result for every believer is to have the understanding of God's truth to where you know that you, you are to walk out in perfect divine health, and it's God's will for you to have that divine health, and that, that you're walking in a way to where the enemy doesn't even try to come near you. Because the Bible is also clear that the truth sets us free. So here Jesus said, Your word is truth. And then he says, in a different verse, The truth sets you free. So what that means is that this word is what sets you free. Not something that you're going to find from another person, you know, another method. Some of those other things do help, but the permanent help, the permanent solution and resolution to your problem is the truth setting you free. Now, people read these scriptures, people see these scriptures in the Word, and it's a theory. And so what we have to learn is how to take this theory, how to take this word, and make it practical. So for us to understand how God's word works, again, we have to go back in the beginning. And so when God said, light be, what happened? Light became. So was God theory or was God practical? As he spoke, things happened. Now, why, when God spoke, things happened? Because he believed his word. So if we're saying something and it's not working, why is that? Because we don't believe it. The truth is that God's word is supposed to work as we speak words, we're it's, everything is supposed to happen, correct? If we are created in the image of God, and God is our Father, so as His children, we are to be like our Father, so that means as we say things, they're supposed to work. And so Jesus talked about you know, the two reasons what stops the power of God, and that is unbelief, that means you don't believe what you're saying is one. And second one is traditions of man, is when people made up a bunch of excuses and reasons why this is not going to work. So there's two reasons for failure, two reasons why God's word is not going to work. So we have to identify those and remove them. And so we also have to see and set an expectation that things are happening. And so what I'm doing for myself is I'm renewing my mind, I'm training my mind that as I say things, as I minister to people, as I say things, I expect, I start visualizing, I start seeing it happen. So how do you know whether or not you believe or not is whether or not you can see the end result. Because if you don't see, if, if whatever you see in front of you if you're not going to change and have a different picture about what you're trying to accomplish, you're not in faith. Because faith is seeing something that you cannot see. Doesn't matter how far you put it out, either a little bit or a lot, until you see a different picture. So for example, if you're ministering healing to somebody and you're seeing them the same way, that means you don't believe that anything's going to happen. 
But God is so good because you are obedient to his word. So that's why he said believers lay hands on the sick. And so what I'm noticing is that when I lay hands sick on the unbelievers, on the people that are, you know, in the world, as I come into contact with them, something starts happening before I even have a chance to try to set my faith or whatever or do anything. Why? Because obedience to God's word. So God made it that when believers come into contact with unbelievers, they will recover, they will heal. Something starts happening. And so what's happening is that life that is inside of us is getting onto that person. The light that's inside of us is getting onto that person when we come into contact with them, and whatever it is that they have starts leaving them. But for us to see God's word work, we have to start seeing something different. So that means when it comes to me, so if I'm trying to change something in my body, I have to start seeing it different than what I see right now. I have to start seeing it the way it's supposed to look like, according to God's word. So also, if we want God's word to work, it has to, what we say has to align with his word. Otherwise, it will work just in the opposite direction. It will work into the direction of the enemy. So if we're going to say lies, if we're going to say negative things about our life, then that's what's going to be happening to our body or to our life. If we keep saying, like, I'm going to get cancer, I'm going to get this, you know, like, my body's falling apart, like, my, you know, I'm going to have this horrible experience. And if we say those things, that is exactly, with time, that is exactly what's going to be happening. Why? Because we're speaking lies. We're speaking the lies of the enemy. Because anything that we say that does not originate, that the source that does not originate from what God said or what this word says, is a lie. Because the only truth is the word of God. Or if a person speaks the word of God, but still the source of, this, of these words comes from Father God by the Holy Spirit. And so if we want to start seeing results, if we want to start things happening and having things change in our life, we have to start shifting and start changing how we see things and what we say. And so the next scripture that I want to go to it's Psalm 119. Because unless we settle what the truth is, uh, we can forget about healing. We can forget about um, permanent solution to our body. We might get temporary results. Somebody might pray for us. We'll get healed. But if we continue believing lies, then things are going to be going in the wrong direction. It's guaranteed. So Psalm 119, in verse 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So God settled his word. Repeat after me. God has settled his word. So the creator of the universe, the one who created you and I, the one who did, created everything, he spoke his word and he settled it, like it's settled. There is no more wondering, there is no more trying to figure out that, that God really mean this. It's settled. So God settled it. So his word is settled. And it says, your faithfulness endures to all generations. So that means a lot of people say, a lot of religions will say, well, that was only like just for that time or for this time. No, it says that God's faithfulness endures to all generations. So that means his word is for every generation. It's for anybody who will receive it. So God spoke his word to everybody because God's will is that everybody saved. Jesus paid the price for every single person. He did not pick and choose. He did not sit there. And God did not sit there, okay, I'm going to pay for this person, this person. Nope, that person is going to be sick. 
They're a bad person. Nope, that person is not going to go into heaven. God did not do that. It says that Jesus paid the price for everybody. So the only difference on who gets to benefit from God's word or utilize the truth what Jesus paid for is who believes. The requirement is believing. Amen? It says those who believe, these signs will follow. Those who believe. So the requirement is believing. And that goes back to as when we were going through spirit, soul, and body, is in here. It's our will. With our will, we decide whether or not we believe what God is doing with us, or we believe what the world is doing through us. In Isaiah 53... God starts out with a question, and he says, who has believed our report? And that word continues to go out to everybody who hears it. So God is asking, who has believed his report? And what is, what is the report? God's word, the truth. So in other words, who has believed the truth? Who has believed what God said? Because it's so easy to believe what the enemy is saying. It's so easy. Why? Because it's, it's everywhere around you. So what's interesting is that um, with our social media, with our devices, and artificial intelligence, what it tries to do is it tries to give you information that it thinks you believe, that, that you're looking for. Right? And so it's interesting because when I talk about healing, when I minister on healing, the information that's blowing up around my device is all of the health stuff. You know, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this. And it all sounds very interesting and very good. But if the source of it is not from here... It's not God's report. If the source of it is not, by his stripes I am healed, it's not God's report. If the source of it is that my body is a perfect creation of God, it's not God's report. Amen? And so, around us, we're filled with information that is, Seems really good. It seems like, man, like, yeah, this is interesting. This is good. And a lot of it is good information. A lot of it is good, you know, things that we can apply in our life that are, you know, important. But for some reason, I'm not getting my phone blown up with uh, posed by his stripes I'm healed. Like, that is not happening. It's about all these other things that I can do to be healthy. None of them go back to the word of God. And so the enemy, with the information age and the information that he has right now, he works really hard on trying to get us half-truth. And so if we're surrounded with half-truth, and then you come to church, and you hear, by his stripes I'm healed, it doesn't sound very attractive. But nothing changes the truth. The truth is still the truth. The truth that the enemy is trying to bring, or half-truth or whatever you want to call it, you know, his version of the truth that he's trying to bring, is something that's very enticing. It's very attractive. It's something, you know, like, that is catchy. Why? Because he knows our senses. He knows how to get to us. He knows what, how our body operates. So he's going to show us very beautiful pictures. You know, he's going to surround us with like, you know, very tasty stuff. You know, like with very, you know, like something that you want to hear. Something that will be just very, you know, you're just going to be very interested to hear that stuff. And so he's bringing information that is trying to come into you through your senses. God's word has, does not 
necessarily have emotion. God's word is settled. It's, it's a fact, it's truth, and it's in here. And so because our senses are so trained with the lust of the flesh, many times when the truth of the word of God comes through, we do not find it attractive. Like, and what the enemy tries to do is like, oh, I heard it. Well, I know that. Yeah, I know, that, you know, by his stripes I'm healed. But then your actions do not support that that's what you believe. If a sickness attacks or something comes against your body, most likely we try to do other methods. We're trying to believe other reports. And we see that so many times, especially when we start ministering to somebody where they come with a sickness, the very first thing we know that we have to do is lead them to God's word, what comes from the spirit, and what does God say about their situation. And when I say that, they say, well, but the doctor said this, and this person said this, and this person had this experience, and my friend had this experience. And so all of these experiences, all of these things, but at the end of the day, does it have anything to do with the truth of the Spirit? No. So the truth of the Spirit does not come across as attractive to our senses. It will actually be opposite. The flesh resists the truth. To the flesh, it says that God's word is foolishness. It's crazy. And especially right now, if you say anything about God or, you know, what God's word says, people are going to call you, you know, you're a hater, you know, you're, you're this and that, you know, like all of these negative things. Why? Because you're not thinking how the world is thinking. You're not thinking what the world thinks that you have to think. So during this whole COVID time, when everything was happening, and I would say like, well, I'm not afraid of COVID. I would get jumped. All of these people would just say all of these things. You hate people. You're going to get people sick. And I said, no. You didn't even listen to what I said. I said, I'm not afraid of COVID. Me not afraid of COVID does not have anything to do with you. You are you. I am me. And I'm saying that I'm not afraid of COVID. And so I'm not afraid if you're going to breathe on me or touch me or anything. I'm not afraid of it. Why? Because I decided that by his stripes I am healed. And so immediately the world tries to blast that position. So any position that comes based on the spirit, the world will go against it. Why? Because that's not the enemy's mindset. And the world is programmed by the lusts of the flesh to think a certain way. And because this information is coming from so many directions, and nobody, even Christians, are scared to say anything, you know, anything what God says. Well, if God says that by his stripes I'm healed and sickness cannot touch me, then that is the truth. Not something else. That is the truth. And so many Christians died because they chose to fall into fear. They chose to be afraid of it. And I'm pretty sure, looking back now, people realize that it was a scam. That it was not as big of a deal as people, because all of a sudden, it's like, that's not important anymore. Everybody, the airports are packed. You know, like, everything's packed. Like, everything went back to normal, like nothing happened. It was just for that particular time that was important, but now it's no longer important. If it was that deadly and that bad, bad, then it would have continued to happen right now, right? But if it just came and went and everybody forgot about it, and even though all of these people, you know, disappeared, and all these people were in fear and all these bad things happened, we have to go back and analyze. As the church, as the body of Christ, we have to be analyzed. Why? Because the enemy, he always circles back around. He tests it, and if he got success, he pulls back, and he'll come back around and do the same thing again. The enemy does not have anything new. He does the same stuff. All of his schemes are to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So what that means is the body of Christ, 
We have to get grounded into what we believe. We have to get to a spot where we believe that God's word is the truth and we stand on that. And the best thing that we can do is that we get so grounded in the word of God and that we're proactively not allowing to anything to come on us. It's a lot easier to prevent stuff from coming into us than once it's already inside of you, killing you, trying to get out of it. And that's God's will. What God is saying is that if you believe that his word is the truth and you start grounding yourself in it, you fill yourself with it, and this is becomes your reality, this is becomes your life, then all of those bad things can't even touch you. That's what's so great about God's word. It was so nice going through those two, three years and not having COVID. It was so nice and not being afraid of it. It was really good. As people were running from it, being afraid, it was good not to be afraid of it and live your life the way you're supposed to, or at least as much as the society allowed you to. There was a lot of things that, you know, that the people, they would not allow you to do. But not having that fear was really good. Having zero fear what the enemy is trying to do because God already shows what the enemy is going to do. Like there's no surprises in the spirit realm. There's no surprises. Jesus predicted everything that the enemy is going to try to do. Jesus said that the work of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. And how is he going to do that? Through fear, sickness, and disease, his lies, torments, depression. So all of those things are known. None of those things are a surprise. And so if we learn what the truth is, and so the goal of uh, divine health plan training is to get into a spot where you're proactively are in the word of God and you're preparing, you're ready. And when you're ready, it doesn't matter what the enemy's doing because you're ready and you will resist. Like what did we read last time? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. The first part of the process is submitting to God. And so divine health plan training is submitting to God. That means getting into the word of God and settling on the truth. When we settle on the truth, then it's easy to resist the devil. Why? Because we're just telling him the truth. So when, when a symptom comes, you say, no, get behind me, Satan. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Symptom, go now. It's easy to resist the enemy when you have already submitted to the truth of the word of God. If you're not submitted to the word of God, the enemy is not going to listen to you. Because you're going to be double-minded. You're going to be believing all the other reports. This person said this. You know, this person said this. The circumstance is saying this, like, you know, the pain is saying this. All of these things are going to be bombarding you. And when those things are happening, if you have not submitted to God proactively, then you cannot resist the devil. And he will not flee from you. That's why so many people died during this pandemic. Why? Because if you have not submitted to God, and the enemy attacked, and you did not have people around you that could fight for you, the enemy wiped out a lot of people. Because people did not submit to the truth of the word of God. And so what we want to focus on, because right now, times are good. So we don't want to waste this time. Right now we have to prepare, submit to God, and be ready. Be on guard. And Holy Spirit will show us everything ahead. We will know exactly what to do. And we will be able to get through any situation victorious. And Jesus showed us as an example. It did not matter what they tried to do to Jesus. None of that mattered. Jesus crushed the enemy every single time and came out victorious every single time. 100% result. And that is God's will. The Bible is very clear that as he is, and it references to Jesus, so are we in this world. That means God's expectation is for us 
is not to win some, lose some. God's expectation for us is to crush the enemy every single time. But for that to happen, we have to believe that this is the ultimate truth. That the report that we're believing is the truth of the word of God. And again, it says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So that means it will never change. God is not double-minded. He's not going to want to heal you one day, make you sick another day. No, whatever he said is settled. It's done, it's finished. So if he said by his stripes you are healed, that means he only has one will for you, and that is divine health, period. For believers, it's not even supposed to be get sick, get healed, get sick, get healed. No, for believers, it's supposed to be divine health, continuous health. Just like it's not God's will for you to sin and not sin, to be a sinner, to be saved and not saved. One day you're saved, one day you're not saved, going back and forth. Because that's what happens in people's lives with sicknesses. One day you're sick, one day you're not. None of this. It's continuous. In our spirit, soul, body training, we talk about that. God's will is for our spirit, soul, and body, for all three of them to be completely restored, to be completely made perfect. He takes care of the spirit. We start renewing our mind, working on the soul, and our body follows. But God's will for our body is continuous health all the time. Amen? And that should be our expectation. So what that means is, you know, all you hear, you turn on the news, you know, like flu season, this is coming, this is coming, allergies coming, you know, this is coming, arthritis is coming. It just, a million things are coming. But all of it ties down to the devil. The devil is coming. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He just has different variations, different samples, different, you know, different things. But if you simplify it, it's the enemy coming to steal, kill, and destroy. And God's will is for us to be on guard and not allow him to take anything from us. From the very beginning, God told Adam, tend and keep. So Jesus gave us the right for a healthy body, for divine health. That means we are to acquire that divine health by faith, by believing what Jesus did, and we are to keep it. It belongs to us. Divine health belongs to us. Peace belongs to us. Joy belongs to us. God's love belongs to us. All of those things, they belong to us. And we are to tend and to keep it. That means we have a responsibility. It doesn't just fall out of the sky. We have to do something with it. God takes care of the spirit. So when you, get, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I have to continue repeating because people mix it up and say all these things. So the spirit part is done by God. You cannot earn it. You cannot deserve it. It's a gift. You're either saved or you're not saved. And if you're saved, you're going to heaven. If you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. There is nothing that you can do here except receive it as a gift. The things that we're working on is the soul part. All of the commands of Jesus is to be working on the soul. And then as you're doing that, if anything illegal comes into the body, you cast it out. But eventually the body will follow with what's going on in the soul. So if you believe by his stripes I'm healed, the body is going to stay in divine health. If you believe that sickness and disease is going to attack you or you have cancer, you have whatever, all these things, with time, that's what's going to be coming into your body. But all the battles happen here because that's where our will is. Our spirit is perfect. There is no issue with our spirit. You do not need healing for your spirit. This is done by God. So repeat after me. My spirit... Is God's, is God's spirit, given by God, given by God. Recreated, by God. recreated by God. I cannot do anything to it. Anything. Devil cannot do anything to it. Anything. It, is it is always perfect. So we have to be very grounded in that. That has nothing to do with everything else that we're talking about because a lot of people get confused 
And they think that when we're saying that we have to read scripture or do those things, they think that we're doing that for here. No, we're doing that for here so we can pull out what we have here and utilize it. Because of his fullness we have received. So from the very beginning of that salvation, God's fullness comes into us. And by reading God's word and renewing our mind, we're able to take what God has already put inside of us and apply it in our life. Release it, you know, like lay hands on the sick. You know, do all the things that God commanded us to do. Amen? So um, the time has run out for today. I'm going to wrap up. And so what I want us to work on this week as a homework assignment is make a decision that you will see your body every day better than you did the day before. What you will be doing is you will be setting your faith on the highest level. So highest level of faith is that you were created in God's image. God himself formed you with his own hands. Genesis 1:26 to 28, Genesis 2:15. So God with his own hands, he created us. So that means God did a perfect, amazing job. And so when you look at your body, now you might have a certain opinion. So if you look in the mirror and you look at your body and the thoughts that you're receiving, that I'm ugly, that I'm fat, that I'm this, I don't like this, I like those this, all of those are lies. 100% lies. Because none of those thoughts, none of those words line up with what God said. Amen? That is just your opinion based on the lies that either people told you or you looked in the magazine and you're trying to compare yourself. Regardless of how you got that information, it's 100% lies. Your end result, your picture, is you see yourself how God created you, and that is you have a perfect body created by God himself with his own hands. That's the end result. Now, that body, as you continue to believe, your body, if you believe that for that body, your body is going to start changing. So anything that the enemy has done to it, or any sickness or disease, or anything by your words that you cause for your body to get into the wrong place, if you see yourself how God created you, your body will start transforming. Amen? As your soul prospers, and your soul prospers when it's aligned with the Spirit. So the only way that your soul can prosper is when it aligns with the Spirit. When your soul starts agreeing with the Spirit, your soul is prospering. And when your soul is prospering, the body's following. So the more that you agree with what God said, and this is practical application, so what we want to do is we want to take theory and make it practical. So when you look at yourself in a mirror, you start thanking God how beautiful you are, how healthy you are, and how amazing of a job he did on your body. And if you start doing that, remove all negative words towards yourself, towards your body. You will no longer say, I don't like something about my body. You know, like if anybody tells you something negative about your body, you can call them straight up, you're a liar. That's a lie. I do not receive it. Be nice. You know, don't, you know, don't make a matter. You can, but just be gentle. But do not receive what anybody says. If somebody says something negative about your body, do not receive it. Only agree with what Father God has said about your body. And when you start doing that, your body will start changing. It will start transforming into the likeness of God, which is a perfect created body. By doing that, we will have the best process of body transformations in our life because the truth sets us free. The truth, just like it sets things free in the spirit, it will set your body free of things that are not supposed to be there because your body will be aligning with the words of God. Amen? So is everybody clear? Sure. No, the soul has to believe what God says. 
We don't heal souls. The truth sets your soul free. So as you believe what God says in here, this automatically starts aligning. Because the way we minister to people in the healing room is we present what God says about them. And God's word itself does the healing. It does whatever it needs to do. We cannot heal anybody. We cannot heal ourselves. The only one that's our healer is Jesus and his words. Amen? So by you agreeing with what God says about you, your soul will start doing whatever it needs to do, and then your body follows. So if you continue saying that I have cancer, I'm going to die, people will be praying for you, life will be coming in, but then eventually your will will prevail. We've seen so many people that would minister to them, they would start recovering, but then if they continue believing death and the lies of the enemy and continue speaking that, then the end result, that is what happens. Because God made it very clear. He presented life, he presented death, and he said, if you do this and this, this will happen. If you do this and this will happen. And he said, pick life. So who gets to pick life? We do. God already picked life for us. God picked the best life for us. God picked Jesus' life for us. He paid the highest price. He did everything he could. That's why I said in here that his words already settled. So as far as God is concerned, he's done doing whatever he was going to do. And he did the best job possible. And he gave us every instruction, everything that we need to do. We just have to take what he has done and accept it, believe it. And then our life will be transformed. Amen? So let's stand to our feet and repeat after me. Father God, Father God I thank you, I thank you that, your will that your will for my spirit, for my spirit soul, soul, and body, and body be, completely be completely restored into the image of Christ. Image of Christ. Jesus, paid the Jesus paid the price. It is my right, is my right to be a whole person I thank you that my spirit is already perfect, that you took care of, my soul is getting renewed to the truth of your word, and my body is getting set free of all sickness, disease, and any oppression of the enemy. In Jesus' name, amen.